Starting with you, Chris, so no majority, no deal with the DUP. It's pretty extraordinary circumstances to be heading into a Queen's speech in, isn't it? Well, not really. We got a million more votes in the Labour Party. We got 60 more seats. We're only two or three seats short of an overall majority, given that Sinn Féin don't sit, given you've got a speaker and three deputies. I think you need 320 or 321 MPs. We're on 318, so just a couple short. I'm very confident that an arrangement of some kind will be reached with the DUP. Clearly, the Prime Minister has been a little bit distracted with other things, the Brexit negotiations, the fire and so on. But I'm sure in the week between now and the vote on the Queen's speech, I think it's Wednesday or Thursday next week, uh, an arrangement is going to get reached and we're going to be able to deliver on our programme, which I'm very excited about. From the Labour perspective, though, I mean, Conservatives say there was no timetable on this deal anyway. We don't need it before we go to Parliament next week. Still probably would have preferred it to go in that direction first, wouldn't they? Well, of course, Chris has got a masterclass in spin here because at the end of the day, he was on course, his party were on course for a landslide victory in this general election. It's the only reason that Theresa May called this election because she thought she would win a bigger mandate. Not only did she not win that bigger mandate, she had the majority she already had taken off her by the electorate. So we will have a very thin Queen's speech, I feel. I think that what we will see tomorrow is almost a waste of time, the Queen coming down to the Palace of Westminster, because they can't even get their coalition of chaos with the DUP sorted out before a legislative programme can be voted so Andrew's on. saying a thin Queen's speech well, there. What about these controversial aspects of the manifesto, like social care funding, like school lunches? Is all this just going to fall by the wayside? Well, uh, you know, we'll find out tomorrow, but on social care, I think there'll be a low and reasonable and proportionate cap as the Prime Minister said during the election campaign. I think Andrew's got a bit of a cheek here. You'd think, listening to him, that Labour won the election. They didn't. They came 60 seats and a million votes behind us. But there'll be a lot in the Queen's speech. There is a very exciting programme ahead of us. £8 billion more for the NHS, £4 billion more for education, increases in the national minimum wage, infrastructure projects like extending HS2 up to Manchester. There is a huge amount of exciting things that I hope, by the way, the Labour Party will support. So I'm looking forward to the Queen's speech. I'm looking forward to us getting on and delivering this exciting programme for the future of our country. Andrew, lots of exciting things we're going to hear tomorrow. Well, Do you I, buy that? I suspect Chris will be very disappointed tomorrow mm. and I look forward to uh, debating with him tomorrow about what's actually in the Queen's speech. I think he will find that there's not that much to be cheerful about in the Queen's speech. It will be a wafer-thin uh, piece of paper. And considering that we have got a two-year parliamentary programme ahead of us, I think people will be asking, what is this government about, we will be putting forward our alternative vision for a better, fairer, more equal Britain. Some of the policies we put forward in our manifesto that saw the Labour Party increase its share of the vote. So they lose. You lost. You well, lost. we might have done. You lost. And, and so did you, Chris, because you lost your majority and you forget We'd that. We'd be you. All right, let's um, focus on Brexit a little bit here. That's going to be a key element of this. Um, in terms of, of, of whether we're going to get this soft Brexit, hard Brexit, lots of talk over that. Which way is this going to go? Chris? Well, I think we saw a very constructive start yesterday. Um, you know, we agreed the programme for debate, which had been a point of but contention before. Well, I think it showed that we're willing to be reasonable and flexible. We're approaching these talks in a constructive spirit because we do want agreement. So it's a softer Brexit? But, reasonable and flexible well, doesn't suggest No, I mean, we are going to leave the single market and the customs union because if we stayed in, we would lose our ability to negotiate new free trade deals elsewhere and we'd still have to make budget contributions and have unlimited free movement. But what we do want is a really good free trade deal. We want to agree reciprocal residency rights at an early stage and that was agreed yesterday by both sides that'll get done by October that's great news and look I think when it comes to a good free trade deal actually the Europeans will want one as much as we do Look, we're the biggest export market for German cars 810,000 cars a year they send over here so they're not going to want to jeopardise that any more than we want to jeopardise the City of London. So there is a good deal to do that protects people's residency rights, protects free trade and allows people with skills who want to work um, to move around as well. I'm really confident we can get that deal done and yesterday was a good start. Andrew, we're hearing about splits within the Conservative Party on the approach to Brexit, but Labour hasn't exactly been cohesive mm. on it. How are you going to handle this 
moving forward? Well, of course, we've got a very clear position on Brexit, unlike the Conservatives, and Chris can smirk and smile. It hasn't smile. been particularly um, clear, I think, well, well, Chris would well, argue Well, that. I think you'll find that we've set out very clearly our six tests that we want to ensure that we have a Brexit deal that works for working people, that we end up protecting those uh, consumer rights, those workers' rights, uh, and making sure that uh, the way we leave the European Union is not economically disastrous. Now, the one thing that David Cameron was very good at was papering over the cracks within the Conservative Party, because the problem that Mrs May is going to have for the time that she's Prime Minister is that whatever she comes back from Brussels with will either have gone too far for the likes of Ken Clark, or she will have capitulated to Brussels for the likes of Bill Cash. And that's the fundamental problem that the Tories have got without a parliamentary majority. Are you going to be pushing for greater involvement in the process? I mean, there is more parliamentary focus now, but are you going to be pushing for more even more? Well, absolutely, because we are an aspirant alternative government to the Conservatives, and who knows where we will be in the weeks, the months, perhaps even years ahead, we might actually end up finalising the Brexit deal because this government won't have got its act together. We stand ready and willing to do all we can to make sure that the British people get the best deal possible. Well, I think the only, the only government that will deliver a good deal is the Conservative government. We've got a very clear plan laid out in the Lancaster House speech in a full white paper. Uh, I, you know, I speak to Conservative MPs the whole time. We are united behind the plan. What, what the Chancellor said today is different to what your well, Prime on, on, the la on the Labour saying. side, you've got the Labour manifesto and Jeremy Corbyn saying that, like we are saying, you're going to leave the customs union and leave the single market. They, are, they agree with us on that. But then you get a whole load of Labour MPs like Chucker um, saying the opposite. So if there's a party that's divided on this, I'm afraid to say it's the Labour Party. So, pretty embarrassing general election. Yesterday, negotiations, arguably, there was too much flexibility. It wasn't the marching to Brussels that we might have anticipated. Is there a way of making tomorrow a win, a much-needed, positive end-of-the-day tone? Well, look, I mean, we did get, like I say, a million more votes and 60 more seats, so that but was a tomorrow, good... But tomorrow, with this speech, well, look, tomorrow, only, well, people are only talking about this yeah. being thin, we haven't got the pomp and pageantry. Well, have we got the content? Well, I think we have. I, look, I'm excited by the Queen's speech. There are some good things in our manifesto. I mentioned some earlier. £8 billion extra for the NHS. Yes, four billion pounds more Not for enough. schools. Record, uh, record, record rises in the minimum wage. That is a program HS2 going ahead and being extended to Manchester. Those are things we can all get excited about. We can get behind. It'll put Britain well on the road to success in the future. And do you think that we... if those things are in the Queen's speech, I'll eat my hat. And without the one. deal, is there any way of making this a success? Well, I think. Uh, it's going to be interesting times because Chris can uh, spin as much as he likes. The Labour Party was 25% behind you in the opinion polls and on polling day we were only 2% behind you. We've got the momentum, we've got the people have. behind us. Uh, they like our policies more than they like your policies now and I think what we will uh, uh, offer from tomorrow onwards is an alternative for a better, fairer, more equal Britain, a Britain that works for the many and not the few. Well, we're actually delivering I think this it. discussion might continue <laughs> after we've moved on, but thank you both very much, Andrew thank Gwynn, thank you. Chris Phil.